Welcome to Living Mosaic. My name is Martha Holden. I'm a member of the Spark of Humanity Network. Living Mosaic is a project of the Spark of Humanity Network. Our idea, the Spark of Humanity Network, is based on the premise that there is a spark of humanity in each one of us. And that as we claim our sparks, by connecting with and affirming the spark in others, our spark is strengthened, their spark is strengthened, and it seems that the strengthened spark acts to erode the defenses, erode, erode the defenses, clarify the bafflement, and release the distortions, which we all have, <clears throat> at least in my experience. And growing out of that is the Living Mosaic Project, which is based on the belief or the conviction that there is a solution to the pain and horror, the stuff we see in the news, the stuff we hear about from our neighbors, the stuff we experience in our families, everything that is distressing, heartbreaking, scary, painful, that there is a solution to that and that the solution can be conceived as a living mosaic of which we are each essential, essential, unique bits with our unique role within the mosaic. So how do we, if we want to be part of the solution, which is part of what today's chat is about, if we really want to be part of the solution, rather than living in denial or despair or wherever we choose to live, rather than in the solution, if we want to do that, then how do, we, how do we allow ourselves to be changed, to be developed, to be formed, that we may become the essential bit of the solution that we are designed to be, that the mosaic, in a sense, is calling us to be, needs us to be which is the only place we're truly comfortable and the only place where there is true joy. So that's the, the basic picture there. Um, today we're going to be looking at receiving. A few weeks ago we talked about accepting. Whatever's there, I forget what I said, but you can find it on the YouTube channel. But today it's about receiving, which is deeper than accepting. It's taking it in, whatever it is, whatever we're offered, whatever is presented to us, deeply enough so that our ideas may be changed, our perceptions may be shifted, our habits may be loosened up, we may be transformed. That's the, the kicker in the spark of humanity approach is that, is that it works best when we ourselves are willing to be transformed because this process of claiming our sparks and connecting with and affirming the spark in others, over time, subtly, subtly, gradually, incrementally, transforms us because we're less defended. And because we're less defended, we become more aware of our bafflement, of where we have not known what to do. How do I respond to this situation? How do I survive? How do I make this safe for me? How do I be comfortable? All those baffling questions 
And it is in response to those questions that we develop our distortions. Oh, if I do this, maybe he'll like me. If I do that, maybe they'll stop hitting me. So these things accrete in sort of a geological process over time. And that is part of the transformation, part of our becoming, our allowing ourselves to become, to be um, sort of debrided down to who we really are, to the us that is the essential, essential to the solution, that is essential to the full life of the mosaic, which is the solution. So through the spark process, we become more available to becoming who we need to be as unique, like it or not. Spent most of my life wanting to be her or him, um, but no, unique and essential. So that's, that's the ongoing process here. So how do we do that? How does that happen? How do we understand that? And that's what this generously offered by Orca Media opportunity is about, is to help us start changing our thinking or letting our thinking be changed, just being open, being willing to consider new ideas, to understand ourselves and our relationship with the world around us, to maybe hold our thoughts and our ideas a little more loosely, to become willing to be formed, molded, scraped, pruned, whittled, uh, you know, made into who we truly are, which is where we're happiest and most comfortable. And as we get closer and closer to our being, the, our peace, the peace that we are, of the living mosaic. So today we're talking about receiving, as I think I said a few minutes ago, um, which is more deep than just accepting. It's really seeing, re receiving what comes to us. All the stuff on our plate. We talk about, you know, my plate is full, my plate is overflowing. A lot of it, of course, is stuff that we've put on because we thought it would make us popular or safe or rich or better looking or stronger or healthier or whatever. There's, a, or we'd, our families would be more aligned with what we want them to be. A lot of the stuff on our plate is stuff that we put there because of our ideas of what's needed so to begin to gently lose our, the tightness of our grip on our ideas of what is needed and what has to happen and what's best, what's best for them usually, right? I usually say, I'm fine. They just need to you know, do this and that and then everything will be okay because I'm fine. This is, this is a false premise, folks. Just be aware of it. It's, it's not true, and it doesn't work. And the tighter we hold on to it, the more strangled we in our lives become. So the, the being willing to receive, to see this thing that has come into our lives, this circumstance, as a gift, perhaps, as an opportunity as something that, if we really want to get radical, which I often do, it's something that is, we can see, if we want to, we can see it as custom, custom created, custom crafted, just to bring about the change in us that is needed. The change in our thoughts, the change in our habits of response, in whatever aspect of life. So when we see it as, oh, 
This thing that when I first looked at it looked like a tragedy or a pile of poop. You, I must have told you this story about the, the man who was walking into town one morning and he saw this little boy shoveling away at a pile of manure. I'm sure I've told you this at least once. And when he came back in the evening, there was a little boy still shoveling away at the pile of manure. And the man said, little boy, you've been shoveling at that pile of manure all day. What's going on with you? This is not usually what little boys do. And the little boy said, pile of manure this big, there's got to be a pony in here somewhere. So it's that receiving and knowing there's a pony in there somewhere. Receiving it as if in the conviction that there is a pony just for us in there somewhere. Because actually those of us who've been trying this out find it's true that there is. But it's a matter of our attitudes, how we hold our brains and, and change of habit. We'll be talking about practice in a few sessions. But that, that just being willing to change our perception or be willing to consider being willing to change our perception so that we can, because, I mean, do we want to be happy? Are we willing to perhaps give, hold our ideas of what we need in order to be happy a little more loosely? Do we want to be deeply, truly comfortable? I mean, deep within ourselves, not just with our, you know, yachts and classic cars and private airplanes, um, big screen TVs. Do we want to be deeply within ourselves comfortable? And if we do, at least in my experience, it's a process. <clears throat> There's no switch to flip that gets me there. But what we're finding is that incrementally, day after day, changing, being willing to change the mind, being paying attention to what's going on here. Is that that negative old thought pattern? Is that the gripping, grasping, adhering to this is the way it has to be, you know, judgment, blame, all that stuff. Is that what's going on through here? Or am I willing to let that go and be open to continue shoveling? Because I don't know how deep in there the pony is, but the pony's in there. So it's the receiving whatever is there with that openness. So I mean, accepting is sort of like, okay, you know, it comes, it's, it's, you know, there it is. I accept that. It's there. But to receive it is somehow to open it up, open up and bring it in to really let that become part of me, to let that change me, and to modify how I think and respond. So, so what, thinking about this, <clears throat> which I do, um, the way I see that I blackmail myself, let's be honest about it, into receiving or being more likely to, to sort of, you know, tip over the edge towards receiving rather than just accepting. I accept it, and I don't like it, and I accept it. But to letting it happen is, can start by asking. <sighs> to use the example of this project, this process, ask, if I ask, I, well, I don't care who we ask, how we ask, what we ask. It doesn't make any difference, I think. It's just to know I can't do it myself. I ask to become part of the solution. I want to be the part of the solution that is what I'm made to be, my essential, unique bit of the solution. I, that, I, I, I ask for that. I want that. And... If I do that 
I'd say daily or maybe twice a day with deeper sincerity than I can manage in front of a camera. Um, then that shifts the metaphysic is one way of looking at it. What that does for me is that the next time something comes rolling down the road and landing in front of me and it looks like a, you know, it looks like a rotten rutabaga or whatever it looks like. <laughs> and I, I can remember that, oh, I asked, this may be something I need to engage with as part of the process of forming me to become a better part of the solution, a truer part of the solution, the part of the solution that I'm needed to be. So by my asking, it changes how I receive. I'm more likely to receive, to take it in, receive, because I have asked. So, and as I say, it doesn't, you know, people, people have all sorts of, you know, whatever. The cosmos, the spirit of the universe, the, you know, the housefly there, the, you know, the shade on the window, whatever. I, th I think, I'm working on this, I think the essential thing is to know that this is not something that I can figure out. For all my bright wit and good humor, I cannot figure out, I really, to be honest, don't have the slightest idea that I can trust of how I need to be modified, changed, formed in order to be the most effective, useful, unique bit of the solution, essentially. So to receive it all in the spirit of that is what, this is what it is, this thing, this rotten rutabaga. You know, okay, well, all right. So I'm not going to say, oh, it's a rotten root, but so do I. No, I, okay. There's something, there's something there. There's a pony in there, I suppose, or a pearl. Um, and it's not visible. I mean, it's not palpable. And it may be years before I recognize it. Oh, engaging with that in that way of receiving it. Humbly, humbly. May I use the word humbly? Humbly, not thinking that I know the answer, not thinking that I know, you know, I know this is a rotten rutabaga, and I know what rotten rutabagas are good for, the compost heap, that's what they're good for, nothing else. You know, to, to have given that up that idea, idea and being willing to engage, to receive, changes me. I don't know what it does for the rutabaga, but it changes me. So it's, it's part of the receiving, to deeply receiving, to allow ourselves to be transformed. The, the Spark Literature Little Book has three reassurances at the end. One is, there's a spark of humanity in each one of us. As we claim our sparks, we become agents of transformation. Because as we are connecting with and affirming the spark in the others, that's subtly changing them from the inside. They'll never know it. You know, chances are. They'll never be aware of it. Because we're certainly not, I'm, I don't, me, I'm scared. I'm not going to tell them. They put up their defenses, you know. Let me do this subterfuge, change them from the inside. We become agents of transformation. 
as agents of transformation, all the resources we need are available to us. Now that is, as I always accentuate, as agents of transformation, all the resources we need are available to us. As doting grandparents, as capitalists, as political agents, as school teachers, as parents, as spouses, perhaps all the agents, all the resources we needed were not available to us. But as agents of transformation, all the resources we need are available to us. And they may be in the rotten rutabaga, chances are, some of them are. And then the third one is, it works best when we, when we ourselves are willing to be transformed. And that's a different angle of approach to the whole Living Mosaic project, which is hopefully, it's hopes to help everybody, help you, help your friends, your neighbors, your family, to know that we're each essential to the solution and to become willing to allow ourselves to be transformed so that we can become effective bits of the solution. Because there is no true solution without us. We can't leave that to Betty Jo next door. Um, you know, she's, we're unique, she's unique. She can, brings what she brings, but she can't bring what I can bring. So, I mean, the solution may be creaking towards being visible enough so more people are willing to sign on. You know, they sort of want a certain popularity before they decide they really want to have a solution and be part of it. And people would much rather say, oh, there is no solution. Um, but that's them, and God bless them, and may they decide that it's much more fun to decide to choose to be part of the solution. And that requires a very strong word, but that is recommended to be part of the solution. It calls for our capacity to receive. And we can start with just little tiny things of receiving. And I've been very bad at this, which is probably one of the reasons why I'm talking about it. You know, somebody gives me something or tries to give me something I don't want. I, I'm not really, I skip it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. How sweet of you, how considerate of you. I don't want it. I won't take it, take it away. Um, I've done that with Christmas presents and other things. Um, so, you know, but to practice receiving, accepting what is, the waiter brings not quite what you ex expected for supper, but maybe you just receive what is. Maybe it's better. Maybe it's better for you. Maybe it's just good for you to be practicing receiving what is rather than insisting on your own way, of which I have lots of practice, so I should be saying me rather than you, and, and you and I both know that. So thank you very much for joining me today. Um, May you have a good until the next time. And thank you for Orca Media and their generosity and for all those of the Spark of Humanity Network who are supporting this enterprise. And for all those that you encourage to come on board, whether they ever watch these shows or not, it's all part of the attitude of there is a solution. And we're each a unique and essential part of it. So thank you very much. May you joyously and comfortably glide into your bit of being part of the solution. Thank you. <laughs>